All right. Welcome to the Chaz Palminteri Podcast. We just got some great stuff happening, folks. Also, don't forget, if you want to see my one-man show, go to chazpalminteri.net. Chazpalminteri.net. And you on, the, on there, you'll get all my um, stuff. If you'd like to get T-shirts with Nayus Can't Leave, sweatshirts, hoodies, Nayus Can't Leave, it's, it's better to be loved or feared. I married one of the great ones. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Great stuff. Just go to chazpalminteri.net and you can get that. I am going to be in Arkansas. Imagine this, Arkansas. Me and Sandy Blue Eyes in Arkansas. That's going to be something else. Talk about my cousin Vinny. Well, we're going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas, doing the one-man show I'll be doing at the University of Arkansas March 1st. March 1st. March 3rd, I'm going to be in San Antonio, Texas. I've been there. I love it. We're going to be at the Empire Theater, March 3rd in San Antonio, Texas. Wow. April, what is it, April 1st? I don't know. April, what is that? Can you find out about that, John? I think April I'm going to be at Atlantic City at the Ocean Casino. That's April 1st. April 1st. That's right. And it ain't going to be April Fool's Day, folks. I am there at the Ocean Casino, one of the nicest casinos anywhere, uh, anywhere, not only Atlantic City, anywhere. And I will be in the Ovation Room April 1st. That's going to be a great show, folks. And I think, what, April 3rd, I'm going to be in Englewood, New Jersey at the Bergen Pack. April 3rd in Englewood, New Jersey. And of course, in June, I'll be back again at the Richfield Playhouse in June. We've been sold out every show there. So th if you really want to see me in Connecticut at the Playhouse, you got to get your tickets now, folks. These tickets sell out real fast. Uh... Don't forget, please subscribe, like, and I'm not just on YouTube, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Google, Apple, you know. So if you can't listen, if you can't watch me while you're driving in a car, you feel like like listening, chatting a little bit, listening to me, listening to me chat about everything. You know, so many people say, Chaz, do old school, do, do this, do that. And a lot of my old school fans, they, you know, they want me to do old school every day, and I, I just can't do that. And I'll tell you why. I do this podcast because I enjoy talking about life and about things. So to my old school friends out there, hey, if it's an episode that you say, hey, well, I really don't want to hear this one. I get it. It's okay. So listen to it for a few minutes. If it doesn't get you, come back next week or come back when you want to, you know, I do an old school job. But to talk about the same thing every week just to get subscribers and an audience and I, I can't do it. I can't. You know, this is this is fun to me. This is uh I started doing this in when I was doing COVID. When when I was doing COVID. When I got COVID <laughs> and the world got COVID two years ago. And I said, you know, I, I couldn't do the show, my restaurants stopped, uh my T V show stopped, uh, my show on the road, uh, the Broadway musical stopped. So it, I, I actually it wasn't my idea. My best friend, uh, Phil Folia, who, uh, that, that's him right there. For those of you who want to know who he is, you'll probably say, who is that guy behind you? Uh, I was able to finally get a picture that I liked and I wanted to put him up because it was really his idea. And we were going to do the podcast together. And uh, a lot of the things you see me do, you know, were his idea about old school and about defining moments. Um, he was a great guy, you know, he was my best friend, and I lost him uh, on COVID. Uh, I don't know what it must be like for other people, but I know for me, losing your best friend, you know, it's, it's, it's never the same. You know, I love people, you know, John, I love people that say closure. You know, closure. I, I, what, what the hell does that mean, closure? There is no closure in life when you lose your parents, you, you lose your uh, best friend, or you lose somebody you love. God forbid people who lost a child. What closure? There's no closure. 
what do you think? You just close it up and forget about it? That, that's it. When my friend Phil Folia died, a piece of me was gone. Gone. And I'm sure people out there listening, there's someone like that for you. That when that person dies or passes on, it's, it's different. Like we used to talk about not only sports every day. We, we, we spoke on the phone every day. We have been friends for 60 years. We were friends. Kids. Kids together. Growing up in the streets. In the Bronx. We met on Belmont Avenue. I, uh, I remember it clearly. My friend Babes Prezioso was there, and Frankie Badan and Nicky Bonehead. And, <laughs> and uh, Slick. And all the guys. And I, Babes had a big reputation about, he was a real fighter, this guy. He was a tough kid. He could have been probably a professional fighter if he trained. And I, I uh, was a block away, and I met him. We were 10 years old, and, and I went over to him, and I said, Hey, Babes, now this is me at 10 now, folks. And I said, uh, I hear you're the toughest kid in the neighborhood. And he laughed. And I said, I'll tell you what. I want to fight you, all right? So we'll fight tomorrow morning, and if I'm not there, start without me. And he left, and Philly left. And uh, that was it. We've been friends ever since. And I'm friends with all of them, Babes and Nikki and Frankie Badan and Frankie Badan. I was Frankie Potato, they call it. You know, I don't even know these guys' last names. We've been friends 60 years. When I got married, my wife had a... I, she goes, well, give me the names of your, the people in the bridal party. So I said, because she had to write out cards. You know, I said, Frankie Badan and Nikki Bonet. She goes... You don't know their names? I said, I, I really, she goes, you got to give me their names. I can't write a card to Nikki Bonehead and Frankie Badan and Ralphie Pigeon shit. And yeah, and then we, used to, then we dropped the pigeon and we just called him shit. You know, and, and I remember we used to yell out the window, yo, shit! And his mother would stick her head out and go, hey, have you right down? Didn't even, didn't even bat an eyelash. Didn't even say anything. Rafi Pigeon shit. Yeah, we call him that because he uh, <clears throat> he had uh, he raised pigeons, and every time he came down, it was all pigeon shit always on his feet, you know. So, and I gave most of the guys their names. Uh, I don't know. I was always a character. You know what I mean? I always found the humor in things. Always, I remember. Uh, yeah, in school in the eighth grade, when I would give people names, and the teacher said to me. Yeah, you think you're going to make a living out of this, Chaz? Huh? I, and you know what? Fuck you. You were wrong. I did. I did make a living out of it. Uh, I had a brother there. That when I say brother, his name was uh, Brother the, the Jesuit people. Was he a Jesuit? I don't remember. If it was. But I know they were brothers, and his name was uh, Brother Richard Daggett. And he was a good guy, but he was tough. He kicked our ass. Let me tell you something. For the things these brothers did, the way they beat the shit out of us, <clears throat> they would be locked up today. Locked up, John, do you hear me? In handcuffs. I believe it. Handcuffs. You would walk into one of the rooms with the brothers, and guys would be doing push-ups on their thumbs. I mean, this was insane. Insane how they would... I remember I opened my mouth once talking, and he just pushed the chairs... He would go from zero to 60 in 100 miles an hour. You know, he, he goes, son of a bitch, bastard, you greasy wop guinea. That's what he said to me. He grabbed me by my neck, pushed me against the blinds, and got the cord and wrapped it around my neck and said, I'll choke the living shit out of you, you little wop. That's right. I feel like some kids nowadays could use that. Uh, let me tell you something. You stopped talking when he started doing that shit. But we would laugh. And my friend Anthony Perry, again, another guy. I mean, we grew up together and we were friends the same amount of time. He was in my class. We used to laugh about it all. We still laugh about it now that these guys would be locked up. I don't know where I got into that, but 
you know, talking about Phil, Phil Folia. Oh God, I miss the guy so much. I'm I'm really close with his family, his his wife Jackie, and and she's doing great now. And uh, his kids, uh, Philip and Lewis. I'm the godfather. Lewis, may your first child be a male child. And um, you know, I treat them. Uh, I see them just as much as I did. Uh, actually, I see them more now because I want to stay close with them as much as I can. Great kids. One thing about Phil Foley, he left two incredible children that are absolutely amazing. Phil Foley Jr. and Lewis Foley. Very talented, very bright, uh, extremely wonderful children. So I'm very proud of them as I am as my own children. You know, um, talking about my friends and especially my best friend Phil, uh, you know what, John? I think it's a good time to to mention some people. Just once in a while, uh, during the show, I'm going to mention some people. Uh, let's see, who do I have here? Jenna Keating. Jenna, Jenna Keatings, yeah. Her father, Paul Keatings, passed away. Uh, they call him Keats. That's what she said. And uh, Jenna, your dad, Paul, made people laugh. Made people laugh. He loved Bronx Tale. Loved it. That's what she said. She said that uh, he had a gift, making people laugh. When I started dating, he would always say to me, make sure they seen Bronx Tale, he would say, because if they hadn't, make them watch it. Okay? If they didn't like it, that would be the test. If they didn't like it and they wouldn't understand, then they wouldn't understand me, get rid of him. He's not the one. That's what she said. That's what the old man said. That's what Paul said. And he even played Streets of the Bronx at the funeral. It's a film that had so much meaning to my, my uh, She talked about her brother Luke and my mom Tracy. And I can still hear him say, now you can't leave in his best Bronx accent. Very nice. That's Jenna Keating. And um, talking about her dad, Paul. You know what's really amazing, John? Um is that, you know, the thing I hate about death, when they say closure, I know I just talked about it, but the thing I don't like about death that I talked about it before is like it's just so final. <laughs> you know, life goes on, but death stays the same. Life goes on, folks, but death stays the same. I don't mean to depress you, I don't mean to bring you down, but you know what? Don't be an ostrich sticking your head in the sand. You're a fool if you don't take my advice. Get your ass going, kick yourself in the ass, and if there's something you always wanted to do, you better do it. Because one thing I will guarantee, that one day you'll be gone. So the best way to beat life is to do something to outlast it. And uh, uh, this uh, e email that I just read by uh, Jenna Keating, her father was a good guy. He was a good man. That's you know He didn't write some movie or win an Academy Award. He just was a good man. And he uh, raised good children, Luke and his daughter, Jenna, his wife, Tracy, and uh, they will pass on to other people what they learned from their father. So you don't have to write a novel to outlast life. Just be a good person and leave that behind. <sighs> wow. And that's the way Phil was. Phil was one of the great, Phil was the greatest man I ever met, next to my father, of course. But I remember when Phil got married, and uh, I think he was only 26 when he got married. I didn't get married until I was, um, you know, 40. So, and I remember talking to him. I said, How could, are you sure you're going to do this at 26 years old? I mean, the, the big smart guy like I was. Well, I was a different type of man than him. And I said, you think you could be faithful? Because he was a handsome guy, you know, he was very educated, and a lawyer. 
and very charming. And he said to me, he said, Chaz, are you my best friend? I said, yes. I think I told this story before. And he said, well, if I can't betray you, how could I betray my wife? You figure that out. Huh? Man died at 69, and he was faithful to his wife for all those years. That's a stand-up guy, man. I mean, that's a stand-up guy. I mean, people out there, do you have a best friend that you lost? Let me hear about it. We'll talk about it. I, you know, I, I have so many, uh, I get some interesting emails about people who, uh, you know, lost someone. And, um, you know, it's, uh, oh, who's this? Yeah, I'll give you another one here. Pete. But not a B-I-O-N-D-O? Biondo. Biondo. I have dyslexia, folks, very badly, so excuse me if I mess up your name. Passed away at Christmas time. Right. Really good man, it says. Pete Biondo. Right. Liked a little glass of wine, a little sandwich. He was a firefighter. Old school. Old school firefighter. Wow. Wow. Died at 87. I mean, you know, still young, I think. I don't care what anybody says. I think we got to make, the way we have health care today and the, and the things we know about stuff, you got to try to make it to your 90s. You know? Really. I mean. I was I, reading somewhere, though, that the past few years have been, we've been decreasing the death age. So I think the average death age was something like 80, 85, something like that. Really? In the past couple of years, that's actually decreased. It decreased? It decreased. It didn't increase. Well, how could that be? I don't know. I think it's because of all the food that we're eating, the sugars. I, I don't know the science behind it, but I know for a fact that um, the age of death is decreasing. That's amazing. Decreasing. Holy shit. I mean... You, do you find that like a little, uh, well, he was old school. Yeah. I'm reading, looking at about him right now. Pete was old school. He was a firefighter. He passed it on both his sons. Yeah. Sister was a disc jockey in Chicago and it was nominated. Wow. 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 So on this site, it says life expectancy has been on the rise in the U.S. It was 47 years in 1900, 68 right. years in 1950, and in 2019, it was around 79 years. But it fell to 77 in 2020 and dropped further, just over 76 in 2021. Man, I better hurry up and get my ass going here. <laughs> I mean, the best thing you could do is eat healthy and work out. Eat healthy, work out. That, I mean, exercise, do whatever you got to do. Exercise, they said, is the most important longevity pill in the world. And eat healthy. The less you eat, the longer you live, folks. The head of uh, Longevity Institute said that to me. I said, is there one piece of advice that you could tell me that will help you, help me or anybody else? He said, yes. The less you eat, the longer you live. Low caloric intake. Well, it's like a car, right? You have a car. Uh, it's got uh, 200,000 miles on it. Things break down. You got to look at your insides like they're pistons, like they're, uh, it's a motor. The more you eat, the more you eat, the more it's got to work. So the less you eat, the longer you live. I do intermittent fasting, you know, John? I do that. I eat it, uh, I stop eating at 8, and I, then I eat again at 12. So I give my body a break for 16 hours of not eating anything, just water. And folks, it's such a, I know it sounds hard, but it's not. At 8 o'clock, you stop, don't eat the rest of the night, go to sleep at 10, 11. And now you're sleeping for 8 hours. So that's another 12 hours you just got in. You just got to stop until 12. That's it. Come on, guys. You wake up at 8, 9, and, and just three more hours. Stick it out. Just drinks. You could have coffee. Coffee doesn't break the fast. Tea doesn't break the fast. Can't put cream in the coffee now. You put cream in the coffee, then you break the fast. So, uh, but it's really great. My neighbor is 95 years old, 
Right. He is in great shape. He swears his secret to life is he goes for a walk every day, which I've seen him do, and he eats fruits all day long. He eats what? Fruits. Fruits. Well, fruit is very good, but you, but you got to be careful. You can't eat too much fruit because it, you, if you're diabetic, that's not good. But if you eat fruit, and ha I'm sure he has a little protein too. Fruits, pasta, and um, I don't know what he eats for yeah. protein. Well, he probably eats very little. Pasta, I, I love pasta. Nobody loves pasta more than me, but... I only have it on Sunday because, you know, it, it's just inflammatory, the wheat, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know. But, uh, but, but Pete, well, let's see, here we go, Pete. About this guy, Pete, who passed away, uh, old school, if you call him at 2 in the morning and said your hot water tank went out, when it's around 10 o'clock, next thing you know, he's knocking on your door. Wow. That is a great father. Yeah. Well, our dad, Pete. This is from Barry. Barry's the son and talked about Pete. Wow. Oh, he didn't die at Christmas. I'm just sorry. He wished me to have a Merry Christmas. So excuse me. They're from Chicago. Wow. Well, Barry, I hope uh, you uh, remembered your father today because I think that's great. You know, what is that? But you remember good. You remember good people. You know what I mean, John? I think that's the best way to honor someone. I think the best way to honor someone is you remember them. You know, you know, I, you've seen my episode where I talked about you know everybody dies three times. That's why I did this. You know. Uh, we die when we take our last breath. Some people say twice. I say three times. Other people say three times too. Then when the soul leaves your body, you can actually see a soul leave the body. I don't mean see it physically. I mean the body changes after the first few minutes. And the third time is when that person's name is mentioned for the last time on earth. So Pete, we just mentioned it. And how to pronounce his last name again? Biondo. Yondo, I believe. Yondo, yeah. Barry, your father's name will never be forgotten. Jenna, your father's name will never be forgotten because this episode goes on and on and on. And my friend Phil Folia, son of a gun. I miss the son of a gun. Phil Folia. Guy could have been, you know, when they say the people that should be president never become president. You know why? Because they just don't want the job. They don't want it. They don't want to do it. Because, you know, too much shit gets brought up. They throw it in your face. And I'm talking about Democrat, Republican. I don't get it. You know me. I don't get into politics. But all of them. You know, and I'll, the only thing I'll say about politics is you got to have term limits. When you have term limits, people will do it the right thing. Because they don't care, because they're not they don't have to worry about being reelected. Unless you have term limit, folks, it's always going to be the same. Nobody should be a congressman or senator for 50 years. Nobody. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. The president, he's only there for four years and maybe eight years. That's it. He's got to go. Same thing with the vice president. Even the Supreme Court, I don't think someone should be there for life. You know what I mean, John? I think it should be, all right, 25-year term. That's pretty good. 25-year term. And then after that, you got to go out and get a job. I agree. I think it's important to get a new generation, new ideas, new beliefs in there. I think you have a there. new generation, new ideas. I think every 20, 25 years, the Supreme Court people should retire. I think it's only right for everybody. I don't know. I don't know where I got off into this thing, but I'm over here trying to talk about death. And, well, I mean, well, that is right. I mean, how could I, you're 90 years old. You, you think you're as sharp as you were when you were like 60? You can't be judging life and all these decisions for people. You, you know, you can't do that. You know, your party probably will tell you to stay on. We can't do it. Not this year. You make adjustments. That's not good. 25 years Supreme Court, gone. Everybody else, term limits, eight years. That's it. 
That's it. Congressman, eight years. You could be reelected after that. Got to get a job, folks. Got to get out there and see what it feels like to work. Okay? I don't know where I got off this, but that's me. So, oh, yeah, I got to show you this photo here. See that photo? Uh, if you're listening to this on Google or, or uh, Spotify, these are a bunch of my friends. We all got together. That's Phil. And, oh, there's Babes. That's Dr. He's a Dr. Shelton. That's Dr. Oriyam. That's Frankie Badan. Imagine these guys are doctors. These are philo- doctors of philosophy. When I say philosophy, doctors of whatever they have. They're PhDs. There's Robert Caffarelli, Neil. Neil Matera. There's my godson, Lewis. There's Bobby Lambchops, my driver. That's me, obviously. Dominic Broccoli, Dominic Broccoli. Now, Dominic Broccoli, who's a dear friend, he owned Gino's Restaurant. The one you saw in the movie, Gino's Restaurant. I brought him in to read for the part of Gino. He's Gino. I mean, he's not. His, his father was Gino, but the name of the place. But I, I, I dedicated the character to him, Gino, right? I said, Dom, all you got to do is walk him. Say, hey, Sonny, how you doing? Oh, see, you like some Brock. I don't remember the dialogue. I wrote it, but I forgot. Brock it up. Uh, Linguini. What is it? What? I, I forgot what it was. Fruta de ma. Right. That's all you got to say. Just say it. Simple. So he goes, okay. So De Niro's sitting there. I'm, him and I are sitting there. I bring him in to read for the part. This is what he does every day. I go, Dom, ready? Okay. So I'm sitting there, and he walks over to me, and Bob is watching, and I'm in the scene with him. And Dominic walks over to me and goes, Hello, Sonny. Would you like some fruit de de bar? I go, cut. Bob goes, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. He goes, Dominic, just, just be natural. Just, you know, just do what you do every day. Just... Bring that down. Quiet, quiet. Take two. Dominic comes out. Hello, Sonny. Would you like some fruit de demand? Cut, cut. He couldn't play himself, folks. He could not play himself. How's that? We had to get rid of him. Couldn't do it. So who ended up doing it is my friend Ralphie Nabilitano. Ralphie owned another... uh, Wonderful restaurant, Ann and Tony's. And Ralphie, I, I'm good. I'm throwing his name out there. He passed on. Ralphie Napolitano. Good guy, solid guy. Ran a great ship there at the restaurant. Good guy. And uh, Ralphie played it. I said, Dom, Dom, you're out. He said, what? I said, you're out. See you later. Get back to the restaurant. It's over. And uh, so that's Dominic, but a great guy, great guy. And who else? That's Nikki. He's an RN. Nikki DiCerno. And there's my other godson, Philip. Uh, so, anyway, we talked about so many things, so many things today. I mean, here's another um, comment that somebody left on one of the other videos that we did on remembering people. And it also has to do with the Bronx tale. Um, so, it ties into this pretty nicely. It says, Mr. Palminteri, thank you for a Bronx tale. I've seen it a million times. My daddy was a Sonny. He was my everything. He met his demise by his best friend set up by the dirty FBI agents. The anniversary of his murder is coming up on December 13th, which passed at this point. Mm. I was nine when he was killed. I grew up around Sonny's. You really brought him to life. Wow. Sonny is my favorite gangster of all gangster movies because he was so human and I could connect him to him on so many levels. He was deeply flawed, but a fearless and brilliant mind and leader. Wasted talent. Thank you so much for a Bronx Tale. My daddy's name was Mont Gardner. Sonny from a Bronx Tale is he truly touched. Uh, Sonny is Bronx Tale truly touched a vein. Wow. And his name was Mont? Mont Gardner. Gardner. Mont Gardner! Your memory is here today! It sounds like he was. Uh... He really loved Bronx Tale, huh? Wow. Wow, that's... um, I mean, uh, you know what's amazing about Bronx Tale, John? It has touched so many lives. 
I mean, when I think about it, I uh, I don't know. When I think about it, I just people come over to me, you know, changed my life. This changed my life. I stopped doing drugs. <sighs> It was a, a blessing to do that movie. I mean, it was funny. I did 60 movies. 60, 65 movies, 20 TV, television shows. And still, when they come over to me, they say Bronx Tale. Well, I mean, look, I, I played, uh, I'm still doing the one-man show. I'm still doing the movie. I mean, I, the movie's still out, and then there's the Broadway musical, so... I guess it is kind of uh, iconic. You know. It's a timeless piece. It's a timeless piece. It's a timeless piece. So I like to hear about your best friends. Who was your best friend? Your dad? Your mom? <clears throat> you no, know we should do right now? And everybody out there listening. Right now, think, if you're driving, keep your eyes open. Don't close them. Because close your eyes. If, unless you're driving, of course. <laughs> and think about, or you could pull over for a second. I'll wait. Go ahead. Think about a person who passed on. Right now, folks, out there, think about a person who passed on who really helped you. In other words, you don't know you would be here today in this position if it wasn't for that person. You can think about two people, it was your mom and dad. You can think about both of them. But think about them and say to yourself, thank you. Thank you. That's all. That's the way to do it. A simple thank you. What do we got here? Serafina. Serafina. Galata, Galata, Serafina Galata. I love these Italian names, right? Her parents, Paolo and Teresa. Paolo and Teresa. Wow. Whoa, wow. Look at this. Her mother passed away in October and the father in November. I mean, it could have been the opposite. I'm not sure. Okay, they were married 48 years. They're from... Sicily, and you know I'm from Sicily, so, Serafina, you are 100% Sicilian. I want you to know that. Not many people are 100% Sicilian. My father, God bless him, used to say, remember, when people ask you, you say, I'm 100% Sicilian, 100%, because there's not many. From the Provenzo of Saragusa, my family's from Menfidi, and Messina. Wow. Hard-working people. Ain't that so? They just passed away, too. 2021. Both of them passed away in 2021? Um, look at that. October, November. A month apart. There's this study that... Um, that could have been COVID, too. It could have been COVID. There's this yeah. study um, where when people get married, if they're married long enough and they have a strong enough connection, right. you usually notice that when one passes away, the next one's shortly to follow after. You know what? And that is very true, except in my case, in my, in my mother and dad, my mother and father. My mother and father, my mother had a will to live like nobody else, my mother Rose. My father, Lorenzo, passed away. I mean, he waited for me, my father. He waited till I closed the show on Broadway. And then I jumped into, a pl I, I would visit him. I'd get on a plane and go see him every Monday on my nights off on, when I was on Broadway doing A Bronx Tale. And I just got in, I, Sunday night, boom, in a plane there, and I come back Tuesday morning. And he held on until I did my last show and I got in the plane and I said, all right, I'm going to go. Now I'll stay as long as I can. And he passed the next day. My dad, Lorenzo, waited for me. Waited for me. I know he did. My father was a great man. A great man. And now you said that about, we all said, gee, mom was, was nice. You know, my mom was, they were both, you know, 
My mother died in 97. My father died seven years, eight years before that. So my mother, my father was calling, but my mother said, I'm not in. I'm hanging this phone up. I'm not in. <laughs> she lived. Uh, my mother, she had a, my father died at 90. My mother was 97. They both had great lives. Both great lives. Uh, all because of my two wonderful sisters, my sister Rose, my sister uh, Mary, and myself. We made sure that their last, well, we always did, but we really made sure the last 25, 30 years were really great. You know, we took care of them. You got to take care of your parents. You know, they took care of you. They wipe your ass. You know, you got to do the right thing when they get old. You know, they become your children, just like you were their, their children. I mean, what kind of man doesn't take care of his parents? What, do you just shove them in a home and you never see them? You go visit them once a month? Look, I'm not saying that putting them, we, we put them in a, a, a wonderful place in Florida. I mean, saw them every day. My sisters did. I was here. I would see that I would fly down as much as I can. Uh, and we didn't put them, my mom is the only one. My dad and her, when they were together, they were doing great. Until my, after my, my dad died, then my mom, she went on, uh, she was assisted living and then independent living, then into assisted living. But it was a great place where it was like, you know, top of the line place where we didn't care about money. We just wanted to make sure she was comfortable. And we saw her all, all the time. My sisters, I have to be honest about that. I would fly in whenever I can. My sister Mary, my sister Rose, incredible job they did. Incredible. So what I say is, you take care of your parents. When they get old, just like they took care of you, you take care of them. I mean, right, John? Yeah, I hope I didn't depress anybody with this episode. I don't think I did. I, th I think I talked about good stuff. And we're going to talk about more people. Please send in your uh, people who you want to remember. Because this episode will laugh or less in perpetuity. And so that name will always be mentioned. That's right, because it'll go into reruns and more things. And keep the memory alive of someone you love. And remember what I said, close your eyes, think of that person, and say thank you. All right, that's our show. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And uh, you have a great, great week. God bless you all.